Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Brian Jack with Simmons Comics, and we have reached the end of the week, so that can mean only one thing. It's time for Last Call, and we're bringing you our picks for comics that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night. Right, Jack? That's right. There's some good ones this week for sure. Definitely independent heavy, and I like to see that. Yeah, we're getting into it right now with the first one from Image Comics. We get Commanders in Crisis number one. I can't think of a time... I've seen a book from Image that has had this many covers. Yeah, and you're talking about a superhero book, almost kind of cosmic looking, and um, it has almost like that like Marvel feel where you got a lot of covers, like you mentioned. Uh, it really, though, kind of harkens back to the old school Image, where Image kind of had that superhero universe that seems to be kind of lacking in independent comics. It's been a hard sell in recent years to start a, a kind of independent creator owned uh superhero book but definitely a lot of buzz on this one yeah and it's written by steve orlando who's written a bunch of good books for dc yep. and marvel right yeah he's got that experience in that genre From IDW, here's a series we're talking about a lot on this channel, especially the FOC. We're talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, that ongoing issue number 110. That's right. Now, this is a highly anticipated issue, as this issue is really going to delve into the relationship between Alopex and Raphael. Um, so definitely want to check out Hot Cover for Cover A. You get that motorcycle cover. Those always get people's attention. But also... Uh, we've got an exclusive for this one. So if you head over to simplemanscomics.com or the 616comics.com, you can check out our brand new exclusive uh, by the amazing Hal Laird. Uh, it depicts an awesome homage to Raphael number one, which of course the first appearance of Casey Jones. Here showing Raphael and Alopex right on the cover. We've got a trade dress, we've got a virgin, and we've also got a red scale version, which pays tribute to that original Kevin Eastman art. Then getting over to Marvel, we get that amazing Spider-Man number 50. This seems to be a pretty important issue, but I like this because I like that Ortega variant that's got that silk cover. That's got silk on the cover. Love the art on that. I'm definitely picking that one up. I'm just excited to see attention returning to the Amazing Spider-Man run. We've long talked on the channel the fact that really the Miles Morales Spider-Man series has kind of been the better Spider-Man story for a long time. Uh, ASM has kind of been sitting, uh, playing second fiddle, certainly to even Venom within the world of the Spider-Verse. Uh, so this this is great that the tension is coming back here for a big storyline. Green Goblin's return. A lot of variants, a lot of exclusive variants. Um, definitely uh, going to be a lot of people paying attention to it. Hopefully, the big thing is that that reader buzz can match what all of the cover art he is bringing to the table. Right. I mean, our channel sponsor, Frankie's Comics, has a, a variant for this coming out as well. Sticking with Marvel, here we have New Mutants number 13. We all know New Mutants just hit, if your theater is open, it hit there, but it also hit streaming. Heard mixed reviews, but everyone has one thing to say about it. They love magic in it. Another thing about this issue, it's got a Peach Momoko variant for it. Yeah, that's right. And, and we talked about the purpose of this show at the last call, talking FOC. Um, you know, it, it's a lot of things, but it's about pre-ordering your comics, making sure you get those books locked in, uh, helping your LCS as well as helping yourself. And one of the things that you always want to take note is when you've got these regular priced variants by these amazing big name hot artists, it helps to get these locked in because you just never know which books are going to get under ordered and end up being tough to get on release day. You don't want to be playing that Wednesday warrior game. So with this one, you got Adi Granoff, you got Pichu Moko. If those are artists that get you excited, make sure you lock in those pre-orders before FOC on Monday night. You mentioned under ordered and tough to get on release day. If you're a fan of these series, you should be ordering pre FOC anyways, just to keep the series going because if it's not getting orders, next thing you know with Marvel, you're heading to digital only. Leaving Marvel for a second, getting over to the Indy with Dynamite Entertainment, we get that Dynamite number one. 
<laughs> That's right. And that pause is intentional because there's, of course, an exclamation mark in there in the title. Da, da. <laughs> right. And this is one to really exclaim about and be excited about because this is a big one for Dynamite. Um, you're talking about a crossover that is going to bring in all of the characters in the Dynamite universe. Um, there's going to be, uh, it seems like this is like their deceased or Marvel zombies. Um, it, this is a major, major story that's gotten a lot of attention. They're bringing the A-list writers. They're bringing the A-list artists. Uh, you talk about variant covers and variant art. You've got regular cover art from uh, Perio. And of course, you know, you've got all those incentives, the Virgin covers, the, the line art variants that Dynamite loves to do. But you've also got Peach Momoko doing Red Sonia and Vampirella variants and Bloody Versions and Virgin covers and XYZ uh, exclu uh, variants and incentives. And then uh, you've got Batman homages, um, but they've also got Arthur Sidem, who have, of course, uh, well known for the Marvel Zombies run. Um, so this is definitely one to pay attention to. I know Dynamite Comics has not been on the positive side of publicity of late. This could be the series that really gets them going in the right direction, bringing uh, Vampirella, Red Sonia, uh, Deja Thoris, uh, the Green Hornet, Kato, everybody all together and being able to tell one big, large scale story. So yeah, we're so excited about this book. We've like, we got on FOC, we love, we love the premises of this book. Jack just told you about it's Dynamite's version of Deceased or Zombies, huge killer crossover between that Dynamite catalog of characters. So you know we had to do an exclusive variant for this, right Jack? That's right. And we didn't just want to do any exclusive. One of the things when we partnered with the 616 Comics that we were really trying to do is bring a different look to these types of variants, specifically um, these kind of like female cover art uh, style uh, of kind of portrait pinup covers. And what we did is we went out and got Justine Franny, an amazing artist. Uh, you've seen her work on Boom Studios with uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer with Willow. Um, as well as uh, some upcoming variants you're going to see from Simpleman's Comics in the 616. But uh, two incredible covers here, a really amazing uh, depiction of Vampirella. Uh, definitely a different Vampirella cover than you're going to be used to seeing. So we've got two versions here, uh, both virgin covers, no trade dress. Uh, the first cover, that cover A with the, the white bone look, that is limited to just 500 copies worldwide. And that kind of gold uh, bone look, that is limited to just 250 copies worldwide. And those will be available tomorrow at 2 p.m. Uh, that's Saturday, the 19th, uh, 2 p.m. on simplementscomics.com as well as the 616comics.com. That's right. So if you are watching this, after Friday night, after the premiere. If you're watching this Saturday afternoon, it might already be up for sale. So head over to Superman's Comics or Run. 616 Comics and get your copy of this Dynamite number one, Justine Franey. I love this cover. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Definitely unique and different. And that's what we want to bring to the table with Simpleman's Comics and the 616 Comics. But that's also going to lead us into that special part of this show where we talk about that indie showcase presented by Black Cape Comics. That's right, blackcapecomics.com. All the books we talk about in this video, you can pre-order at Black Cape Comics, as well as the two that we're about to spotlight right now, starting with that first one from Bolt Comics, we get Devil's Red Bride number one. That's right. And if you're talking about somebody who's unique and different, Black Cape Comics is definitely a store to be on the lookout for. Head to blackcapecomics.com if you're looking to pre-order any of these upcoming independent titles, as well as anything we talked about today. But Vault Comics is coming back. We've been talking about this, right? We talked about this uh, just this past week with the Bolo Show. They've had a few releases in a row that have had some serious momentum. We've seen the buzz that Heavy had this week. And because of that, we need to be looking to the future. So FOC, that's a great time. And these independent releases, these small press publishers, these are the ones that's the most important. I know maybe it sounds sales media. We've talked about how important FOC ordering is, but uh, these independent releases, we've seen this with these small press publishers. When these books take off, when the reader buzz gets out there, uh, you cannot get these on release date. So whether it's the regular cover or those pulp variants that Vault's been putting out that are absolutely incredible, uh, make sure you get your order in before FOC, whether or not you're at your LCS. And if you don't have an LCS, head to blackkidcomics.com because you can get those pre-orders in there. So there's our books for the Indie Showcase presented by Black Cape Comics. Again, blackcapecomics.com. You get all the 
all the books talked about in this video, as well as their own exclusives. And they have prints available as well. Like we always do towards the end of the show, we have some additional printings that are heading final order cutoff. That's right. Uh, this is the now the biggest segment of the show, Brad. This is where all the heat seems to be coming from. And this week is no different. So we're talking additional prints. We're starting off with Stillwater number one, coming with a second printing from Image Comics, Chips and Darsky, Skybound. And of course, there is an exclusive from Juan Doe from SimplemansComics.com, as well as the 616comics.com. Uh, next, we're talking G.I. Joe 274. Sold out was kind of a sleeper issue. Going to a second print ahead of G.I. Joe 275, which is a big uh, end-all, be-all issue for Snake Hunt Part 10. And there's an exclusive for that one on Simpleman's Comics and the 616comics.com. But now we're getting into really the meat and potatoes of the heat. We're talking Strange Academy number two coming with a fourth print. Thor number one coming with a fourth print. Thor number three coming with a fifth print. Thor number four coming with a fourth print. Web of Venom Wraith coming, number one, coming with a second print. Seven Secrets number two, an amazing issue series, Reader Buzz coming with a second print. It Eats What Feeds It, number one, from Scout Comics coming with a third print. And Stargazer number one, a big kind of sleeper series from Mad Cave Studios coming with a second print. And if you missed out on that first print and you couldn't get a copy, we've got our version exclusive covers available on Simpleman's Comics and the 616 Comics for just $14.99, limited to just 200 copies. Yeah, so make sure you check out, we've got a lot of exclusive variants up there on SimpleManscomics.com, as well as the 616comics.com. So we got Draken, we got Seven Secrets, we got Ninja Turtles, we got G.I. Joe, we got everything that we love. We like to produce variants for books that we love. We talk about it all the time. So if you, you share in that interest, Make sure you check those out at SimpleMensComics.com as well as the 616Comics.com. And with that being said, guys, there's the last call for tonight. We will see you in the next video.